أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس وما يعقلها إلا العالمون بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ما بعد I was looking at um, which of the sections I should choose because it dawned on me we literally just have seven eight more lectures our khatim is next Monday today is Monday our khatim Quran is next Monday the days are winding down subhanallah and there are so many beautiful uh, parables and so many beautiful aphorisms I cannot do all of them so I have to now be selective uh, and so today I'm going to do uh, a phrase that every single one of us we hear all the time and it is one of the most common phrases that we hear in khutab and durus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ This is a very common thing that we hear all the time and it is one of the most powerful and succinct summaries of really this entire religion. This is Surah Ibrahim verse 7. And in fact, the beginning of the verse is actually very powerful. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ And know that your Lord has proclaimed. This is the adhan of Allah, literally. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ Allah has made a proclamation. This is the adhan, the proclamation that Allah has made from the beginning of time. What is that proclamation? لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ If you thank me, I shall give you more. And if you are ungrateful, then know that my punishment is severe. So it is very important, therefore, that we understand what is shukr and what are the blessings of shukr and how do we do shukr? How do we thank Allah? The concept of shukr, the concept of thanking Allah, in fact, this is the very purpose of our creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna hadaynahu sabila. We showed him the path. Now man has the choice. What is the choice? Imma shakir wa imma kafur. This is the purpose of why we are here. Either man can be grateful or he can reject and be ungrateful. And by the way, again, time is limited, obviously, in these short khatiras. But the very fact that the opposite of shukr is kufr is enough of a warning call to us. The opposite of shukr is kufr. In fact, the reality of kufr is not disbelief in Allah. The essence of kufr is actually to be ungrateful. And the reason why the kafir is called kafir is because he's ungrateful by rejecting Allah. So the essence of kufr in an iman sense is kufr in a shukr sense. Did you guys get that? The essence of rejecting Allah is to be ungrateful. That's why the kafir is called kafir. So the essence of iman, therefore, is to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that we have, Allah azza wa jal gave it to us in order that we show thanks to him. When the Prophet Sulaiman was blessed with all of his blessings, what did he say? قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّي لِيَبْلُوَنِي أَأَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ this is all from the blessings of Allah. We should all think of this verse every time we look at the blessings Allah has given us. We see our family, we open our bank account, we get our paycheck. We should think of what Sulaiman said. قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّي All of this is from Allah's magnificence and blessings. Why? لِيَبْلُوَنِي To test me. أَأَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ Whether I will do shukr or whether I will be ungrateful. And Allah tells us in the Quran, هُوَ الَّذِي أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُضُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ He brought you out from the wombs of your mothers. لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا You knew nothing. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ He gave you eyes and ears and the faculty to think. He gave you all of this blessings and knowledge. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ so that you could thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the purpose of us being here is to thank Allah azza wa jal. That's the very essence of creation. Now, what exactly is shukr to Allah? How can it be shown? Ibn al-Qayyim has a beautiful passage in one of his books called Madarij al-Salikin. He mentions shukr is done by multiple ways. First and foremost, he says, shukr is done by acknowledging that Allah has given you all that you have. 
You must acknowledge that everything you have is from Allah. Not from yourself, not from your own skills, not from anything you have done. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, that acknowledgement should lead to, in your heart, humility and appreciation. There should be a genuine sense of thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, the tongue should then begin the praise of Allah because all that he has given you. So from the heart, it will move up to the tongue and the tongue will be constant in the hamd and the shukr and the tasbih and all all of the adhkar. Fourthly, the shukr should cause you to be appreciative in your rituals, in your actions, in your ibadat. And fifthly, especially those blessings that are more than others that you have, if you are especially wealthy, if you are powerful, if you are rich, whatever you have, that blessing should be used in the service of Allah. That is the ultimate sign of shukr, that the blessing that you have, you use it to worship Allah and not to disobey Allah. As Allah said to Dawood and Sulaiman, I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Show me your shukr in your actions. Allah says to Dawood and Sulaiman, why Dawood and Sulaiman? Because they were a rare breed. How were they a rare breed? Few were the prophets who were kings. Even our Prophet he was offered kingship. He said, I don't want to be a king. Allah offered him. Jibreel came, said, if Allah has allowed you to be a king, he said, I don't want to be a king. Dawood and Sulaiman were very rare. They were prophets and they were kings. So they had the blessings of this dunya as a king does. And of course, they have the akhirah. So what did Allah tell them? I'malu ala Dawuda shukra. Show me your shukr in your actions. Shukr isn't just shown by tongue. Shukr isn't just shown by a concept in your heart. Shukr is shown in your actions, in your rituals, in what you do unto others. Now, what are some of the blessings of shukr? I'll mention only three directly from the Quran. Number one, when we are thankful, Allah Azza wa Jal protects us from punishments. What this means is that when we are suffering a punishment, then collectively we have been ungrateful and unthankful. And especially in light of Corona, we need to think about this. Allah says in the Quran, "Ma yaf'alullahu bi'adhabikum in shakartum wa amantum." What will Allah gain by punishing you if you are thankful and you have iman? If you are shukr, there's no use of punishment. One of the reasons of punishment coming is we reorient ourselves and return to Allah. So when we're shakir, no punishment. Number two, Allah tells us in this verse, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I'll give you even more. I'll give you much more. Don't worry. All of it is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And He can give. And number three, and the best blessing, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ if you thank Allah, Allah will be pleased with you. If you thank Allah, Allah will be pleased with you. And this is the highest rida of Allah. The rida of Allah is achieved when we are thankful to Allah. Final point, what are some practical tips to be thankful? We mentioned how to be thankful, the blessings of thankfulness. What are some of the practical tips from the prophetic advice? First and foremost, our Prophet wasallam said that look to people who have less than you to feel that thankfulness. One of the obsessions of our Western culture is that we always look to the elite or the high or the mighty or the billionaires. We look to the top 0.1% and their lifestyles, the lifestyles of the rich and famous. No, don't look to them. Look to those, our Prophet said, that you have been blessed over in the dunya. Look to those who are struggling go to the yatim the orphans and then see alhamdulillah i have a house over my head look at the situation of the refugees look at the situation of those struggling and then thank allah alhamdulillah this is the first thing do not compare yourself in a dunya we sense to those that are above you secondly hadith is in tirmidhi our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said kun qani'an be content with what you have takun ashkarun nas you will be the most thankful of all of mankind if you are content, not greedy, you're happy with what you have, Alhamdulillah, I have good health, I have good wealth, Alhamdulillah, I have family, Alhamdulillah. If you are content, you will be ashkur nas the most grateful of people. Number three, our Prophet advised that we should make dua to Allah to help us thank Him. He said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal in the famous hadith, O oh Mu'adh, I love you for the sake of Allah, so make sure you make this dua after every single salah. What is the dua, guys? You all know it. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help me to remember you and help me 
to thank you. وَشُكْرِكْ And help me to worship you perfectly. And the final point, our Prophet ﷺ said that if you want to be thankful to Allah, then thank the people who have helped you as well. Because when you don't thank the people, then you are arrogant. Anybody who helps you, anybody who's done a favor on you, you should thank them because that will give you that humility. And you will see that Allah is using so many people to bring khair and barakah to you. Our Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is not thankful to others who have helped him, is not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are simple pieces of advice from the sunnah, how we can be thankful. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of the shakirin and inshallah we'll continue tomorrow. وَكَذَاكَ نَسْأَلُكَ الثَّبَاتَ فَإِنَّهَا فِتَنٌ تَجِيبِ الشَّيْبِ لِلشُّبَّانِ يَا رَبِّ وَاخْتُمْ بِالتُّقَى أَعْمَالَنَا حَتَّى نُسَاقَ لِرَوْضَةٍ وَجِنَانِ